It's little Tommy from Cleveland, the session man, coming at you on October 31st, which is actually my favorite holiday. Um, and I think it's my kid's favorite holiday, too. Um, you know what holiday we should scrub? Columbus Day. Why do we even have that? But uh, Halloween rules. Uh, I just love the fall, as you guys well know. I love the, the vibe of... Um, Halloween. I always have, man. It's a great time. Oh, my kids are super excited. I drove them to school this morning. And they were loving it. Um, homeschooling number 170, if you can imagine, is, is upon us. Um, uh, and I just, you know, we haven't talked about this, but we're up to 72,000 subscribers at this point, which is fucking crazy to me. I, I just can't even believe it. Uh, for a thing that started as a joke, you guys have all stuck around. And, uh, man, it's great. Thank you. Um, I want to, uh, thank you. A lot of thank yous today. Uh, if you can just put up with me for a minute, I want to say thank you to this, uh, this fellow named Brad from this amazing company that makes these incredible cables. Um, he sent me these, these nice cables. Look how nice these are. These are nice, man. And I tried to pay the guy. I said, dude, I don't want any freebies. I just want some nice cables. And he wouldn't accept a dollar. And I really appreciate it, dude. That is very cool. Um, Larry's not about, you know, getting stuff for free. Uh, he doesn't like that. I tried to pay the man. He probably had a fortune in these cables. And I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Very cool. I will use them. And I will tell everybody about them. Okay. Um. I also wanted to say thank you to, uh, oh, sorry, that just slipped out of the way there. I want to say thank you to uh, my friend Barry Hackett, my oldest friend. He's such a cool guy, man. Uh, known this guy for, well, he's not my oldest friend, but he sure is one of them. I've known this guy for 25 years. Uh, he owns this amazing uh, auto, auto repair shop out in Murfreesboro, Tennessee called Hackett Brothers Automotive. But I got to tell you, man, salt of the earth, this fella, you know, he came over yesterday morning, football Sunday, and made me and my boys uh, my, uh, homemade waffles on a waffle iron that he brought and gave us, showed us all how to do it. It's an old family recipe. Hung out, we played football in, in the front yard. It's just a beautiful guy. It's just such a great soul, man. I love that boy. Barry, you're an awesome dude. Kids had a great time hanging out with you. Okay, so... Uh, Oh, man, we got so much to talk about today. This might get boring and long. I hope it doesn't uh, bum me out too bad. Uh, I want to say thanks to Peter Hall, the guy that watches the show, who's always very generous with his donations, and I, I appreciate that, man. Very cool. Um, I sent him a Trip to Witch vinyl. I hope he got it. Speaking of Trip to Witch, we are, we are officially working on our second album, Sweet Dean and Me. Uh, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a go. I don't know how long it's gonna take us to get it finished, but we're gonna we're gonna get it cooking. 
Um, thank you for all the kind words about the last couple of videos, one with Brian and the, and the one I put up last night, or two nights ago, on the old Jaguar. I think a guy out there named Gilbert Gilmore pointed out how, how incredibly hard that is to play. <laughs> it is. It looks easy, but damn, it's hard. Uh, that little that little thing there. Uh, it took me a few takes to get that, just so you know, Gilbert. I couldn't get it on the first take. Um, but, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, a little pain is worth the gain, as they say. Um, all right. So it's Halloween, right? And uh, I, I promised you guys uh, I was going to tell you uh, the story about the haunted car that I owned, right? And, and one, one guy said, you should do it on Halloween. It'd be great. And I said, okay, that's a pretty good idea. So, you know, uh, I don't know if y'all believe in this sort of thing, but uh, don't it seem like there are just some things in life that are, that just have, uh, I don't know how you, how you'd say it, a curse on them or something like that, you know? I'm not really big into all this stuff, you know? Uh, I'm not always looking for ghosts and things like that, but, but I gotta tell you, man, back in my younger days, I was in my 30s, early 40s, and, um, yeah, probably late 30s, and and I was obsessed with old cars, okay? Uh, and I'm not a mechanic, which is weird, but I've always loved old cars, and, and I lived in the end of this cul-de-sac in this, you know, this neighborhood, just residential homes, and I and picture me down there with five old cars in my driveway, plus the new ones that I drive. Like, it was crazy. I had, I had, uh, I just had an obsession with them, you know, and, and, and uh, I had all these cruisers, you know, and one day I was hanging around with my friend Billy Davis, who I loved to pieces, who has since left us, sadly. I love Billy. He was a beautiful, beautiful guy. Him and I used to have, you know, a little bond between old cars, you know. He would help me work on them. He was a great guy. Anyway, he introduced me to this fellow I didn't know very well. And he said, you know, this guy's got a 67 Coronet RT440 for sale. And I was like, cool. I've never had a, a burner. I always wanted a car that could just do burnouts all the way down the street, you know, insane power. But I never had a car like that. And, and Billy said, man, this car, I'll give it to you. 440, six pack. You're going to, you're going to have to like, you know, you're going to have eyeball flattening acceleration. So I bought it. Okay. And, uh, it was, that was probably about 10 grand or something like that. I can't remember, but, uh, it needed a little work, you know, didn't run very well. But I, I had a feeling that it, that it, that it was gonna, right? So I owned the car for about a year and a half, I reckon. And I gotta tell you, man, that car got me involved in some of the, the creepiest stuff I, I've ever been around. I mean, I, okay, let's just start with this. The first thing I did was just try to get the thing running, right? So I started dragging it to all these, these mechanics. And as we all know, a good portion of guys that work on old cars are a little bit screwy, you know. Uh, it's a little difficult to, you know, to find a, a guy who's like who likes to work on old cars who's you'd call normal, right? This car got me mixed up with some of the the shadiest people I have ever been around in my entire time on this planet. I have been around some shady people. Um, none of them could ever get the car running right. Uh, all these guys promised me, man, I'll have that thing screaming for you. And uh, they did, did diagnostics on it. I thought maybe it had a dead hole or something because it wouldn't go. Everyone was, oh man, it's getting good compression. It should be good. But nobody could ever get the thing to run. Uh, I kept dumping money into this car and uh, it just never would run. And uh, I started getting frustrated. And uh, the thing was, uh, you know, I, I just was looking for one moment of joy while I was owning this car, you know, that I could get from it, but it was just all heartbreak. And, uh, man, uh, I got so frustrated with the car, uh, eventually that, that, uh, I decided uh, I wanted rid of it. Right. And, uh, so Billy Davis, the guy that I just mentioned, um, my, my dear friend, who's just a awesome dude. I miss him so badly. Um, his sister, who I didn't know, 
His sister Marion offered, he, Billy said, you know, my sister Marion could sell that car for you. And I was like, well, I mean, how, does she know how to sell cars? And he's like, yeah, man, she'll take care of it for you. Just just leave it with her and she'll and she'll handle it, you know. So she she took the car and um, she put it on uh, on eBay and I think sold it for about 10 or something like that, 10 grand. And she called me and she said, uh, how do you want the money? Uh, and I said, well, you know, you're coming into town, she, you know, because I'd rather have cash, you know, because musicians like cash. And, uh, and and she said, yeah, I'll be, I'll be like in a week, you know. So I said, well, yeah, just wait and pay me when you get in, you know, in a week. And, uh, man, a week came and went. Two weeks came and went. About a month came and went. And, uh, Man, uh, I was like, I started asking Billy, what's up, man? Has Marion got that money for the car, you know? And uh, he says, man, I haven't talked to her, man. You know, she's had a history of screwing people over with this kind of stuff. He tells me, I'm like, what? Billy, like, why didn't you mention that? So one night I get a phone call from in the late night. I get this phone from a woman on the phone. And she says, she says, Tom, uh, this is Marion's friend, so and so. Marion's too upset to talk to you right now, but she wanted to tell you that her crack addicted son stole the money from the car that you sold, um, hacked into her bank account, which I never believed a single word of, but it was the pitch that they they put on me, right? Um, and so I was just like, I called Billy and I was like, Billy, what in the fuck is going on here? And he was like, oh, man, she did it again. And I was <laughs> this recommendation of her to sell the car from Billy was the only thing that guy ever did that I questioned. He was an ace of a guy. But, like, why did he, why did he ever turn me on to her? I never understood it. And uh, so I ended up taking her to court, suing her. I've sued two different people in court, by the way. One, both cases, hardly ever got a dollar out of any of it. But, okay, here's the ass kicker, Okay. In order to even sell that car in the first place, I had to, I, I had to produce a title, right? And, and I had a title for the car, and I always kept my titles for all my cars in this one little drawer in this filing cabinet. I was very organized. For some reason, when that car sold, I went to get the title, it was gone. It was gone. I had no idea where it went. I looked high and low. I had to pay another 350 bucks for another title on the way out the door just to sell the thing, right? Oh, Lord Jesus, that car. Um, you see it in the photo. There's just something ominous about it. Somebody must have died in that thing or something. Uh, anyway, enough of that. I told you I was going to tell you the haunted car story, but there it goes. There was more to it, but those are the highlights, okay? Um, what else we got? We got a few VCBs for you. Um, uh, borderline guitar guy. He, he said, uh, well, you know, I'll do... Let me do this one. This guy said, how do, you, how do you detach from playing the blues? You always play harmonies and melodies that are neither blues nor rock nor jazz. How do you do it? I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, um, I don't even know what that means. Um, you know... I try to avoid, I guess it would, I would say that I try to avoid a lot of the common cliches that, that you see people do, right? I mean, um, I guess that's it. Uh, I, there's a lot of like real cliche stuff you'll see guitar players doing that just makes my skin crawl. I cannot take it. And my whole life, I've just wanted to do something different than that, which is why I feel like I've developed whatever style I have developed. It was all just in an effort to avoid all those cliches. I mean, every, look, cliches are cliches because they work and they're good. And there are moments on sessions when I will bust out shamelessly a cliche that I know is going to work. Because that's what the song's dying for, right? But just when I'm just playing my own shit, goofing around, I try to stay far away from all that stuff, you know? All the stock blues riffs and all the jazz chords that I, you guys know I hate that stuff. Oh Lord! Uh, but you know, it's you know all all the frustrated piano stuff I do, where the crazy bass notes and all the big stretches and stuff. That's just all. That's what it is. 
It's all just trying to get away from cliches. And I, I suggest that you guys do the same. Because we've certainly got enough of that shit in this world. Um, we don't need any more, uh, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan licks and fucking uh, stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like it's been done, guys. It's great. It was great when he did it. Let's move on. No more Hendrix tributes, please. Um, you know, I mean, that shit was amazing. But it's been done. Let's Let's find some new shit. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I don't know if I'm doing it or not, but I'm trying like hell. Uh, another guy said, uh, a borderline guitar guy said, this guy knows, he, this is on the video with the Jaguar, he said, this guy knows about pain, the sound of hopeful suffering on the fretboard, a melancholic trance that, that just froze me for 128 seconds. Oh yeah, I know about pain, especially after yesterday when I lost a small city betting NFL. Oh, sweet Jesus. Man, I was just, couldn't catch a break yesterday. My God. Did you see when Josh Allen threw that pick on the five-yard line? It was like so rigged. Oh, God. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Back to the question. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you for saying that, man. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for saying, you know, I just, you know, hopefully the, the whole point of music is to move people, right? Um, if you can tap into anything in this world with your instrument or your voice that moves people, you're probably doing something right. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Uh, let's see. Uh, one guy said, you have a, a gifted pinky. Okay. Well, you know, I don't understand why, why people don't... Thank you for saying that. I don't understand why people don't use their pinky. Okay? I know we've talked about this, but how in the world... Are you going to go like this? Or like this? Without your pinky? Or how are you going to do, um, you know... You know, how are you going to do this stuff? I mean, why would you play guitar like this? Like some guys do. I just don't, I don't understand it. I mean, the thing is right there. It's perfect for stretches. You know? Just use it. I mean, develop the pinky. I, I mean, I can I could do whole solos in that pinky. I bend with that thing. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I realized that I haven't stressed enough uh, with you guys. I see guys that are, that are really good guitar players, actually, that don't understand this. Man, you cannot get any power in your bends unless you push your fingers together, for God's sake. Please, people. I see people trying to bend, and they got their fingers like this. They're all spread apart. How are you going to get any power like that? you got to push your fingers together. Whether you're bending with your ring finger or your little finger, get these four fingers right together. Bend that string, or this. You get better accuracy. You get more, way more power like that, and you're not going to get as much string slipping because you got that meat hook grip on it like that. See that? They're like jammed together as tight as I can get them when I'm bending like that. If you take one thing away from this video, make it be that. I know this is getting long, and I apologize. Okay, what else we got? Um, uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me and watching this channel. Um, uh, I want to tell you, well, this is totally unrelated to anything else that I'm talking about in this video, but I've, I've been wanting to mention this for a while, and I don't think I have mentioned this. And I may have, but I'm, you know, like I'm getting old. I can't remember what I told you. I'm going to post a link on on this video. Because, you, know, you know, you guys know I'm a big sports guy. I love football, boxing, all that stuff. There's a story that I learned about a while back that is probably the most tragic boxing story I've ever, I've ever heard in my, my entire... And there's been a lot of tragic boxing stories about a guy that actually grew up in Antioch, Tennessee, which is very close 
you know, to where I where I'm living. You know, it's like the east side of Nashville, right? I'm on the west side. Uh, but man, dig this video. Give it a ten or fifteen minutes or whatever, and just tell me if you don't think this is the most tragic story ever about Irish Billy Collins. You guys know about Irish Billy Collins back in the eighties. Um, man, um, I'm so fascinated with this story. I've been thinking about this for years. Uh, I've even thought about driving over there to where he, where he lived just so I could see that area, you know, on a day off one day, you know, I think his dad's still alive actually. But anyway, I'll post the link. You guys check it out. Hope you have a great day. Go trick-or-treating tonight with your kids. You know what? I always get stuck with staying at the house to give out the candy. I never get to go out any fun. So uh, have a blast. Happy Halloween, guys. Take it easy, all right? Bye-bye.